It's like I'm gonna bust it up. Wow. Really mean, mean nothing. Gotta tell you exactly what you're gonna do. <laughs> exactly how are you gonna bust it up? Just go beyond what I've been doing. I'm gonna do it first. Yo, everybody. There's like a group. There's like a group of like 12 people outside waiting. Let's set up. What you wanna do? Get back. Get back. You guys snuck in through the back door. I'm gonna open up the front door. Let everybody in. Come on! Give me a. Uh, let me get that. What up, play? It's over there. It's over there. What's going on? What's your name, brother? Five more reps. I remember this guy. Yeah. Yo, he's got to get strong like you. Keep bringing him. Yeah. Bring him every time. What's up, dog? Come on. Bring it right through. Bring it right through, man. Almost there. Good. Those neck muscles. What's up? What's your name again, man? Justin. Good to see you, bro. Where you been all summer? Utah. Oh, in Utah? That's all right, man. Look at this guy, man. He's getting jacked. You leave him alone and he starts building some muscle. You guys working farmers carries all day? You working this with him? Yeah. Cool. Yo, why don't you guys do this? Take a medley around the island with it. Work some high volume with it. Meaning it's gonna really work your forearms, your shoulders, your chest, and back. Let me let's set up a separate one just for you guys. And then you just take it around the island. Little girls are doing climbing a rope. It'd be cool to see that. She's like Isabel. Never seen. They're younger. Their bodies are still kind of small. It's a good excuse. My two daughters do it faster than me, and they're small. You'll see them later. They're small, just like her. I know you guys have met. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. So these are from your country? Yeah, they're from Nicaragua. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about them. I don't know how good they are. Oh, okay, They're cool. from Esteli, Nicaragua, called Santiago. That's a beautiful gift, man. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Anybody who comes bearing gifts is welcome <laughs> in my gym multiple times. Yeah. But actually, my cool. grandma gave him to me. He's like, take him for your friends and everything. Yeah. And because uh, I'm on my way to Canada. Yeah. So, and yesterday... You can only take a certain amount up to Canada, right? Did you say? Yeah. I only, have, I only have like 16 though, so I could have taken that like... Yeah, Whoa, Elliot loves his cigars. Yeah, man. I'm gonna give him to him. I know she will appreciate it. Yeah, it's water. Cool, man. Thank you. I Yeah! Yeah! Woo! 
got it, bro. Come on, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Almost there, almost there, almost there. You're right, though. Come on, Abe. To me, to me, to me. Come on, Abe. Good shit, good shit. Keep it going. Woo! Keep it going, Abe. I won't say nothing, you obviously want to balance but it out, but you need to balance out your external rotation with your internal rotation. Okay. Purely. I mean, you could statically stretch the internal rotators. You, know, there's, you can look it up online. There's a million ex internal rotation exercises. Okay. That, that uh, athlete test right there is a stretch in itself. You right. understand? What you could do is take a stick, grab it, grab it, and slowly drive it up as you go along. You get what I'm saying? Or a towel. Just slowly drive it up. Or what I would do is I work a lot of you. external rotation. Don't do any internal. It's like it's like a Oh, this is chilling with Abe, episode one. Episode one. Chilling on the tire with Abe. Today we're doing uh, farmers. What else? What else are you doing today? Uh, flipping a tire. Flipping a tire. Maybe do the log. Do some log. That's dope. I'm gonna start coming every week. Huh? I'm gonna start coming every week. Word. Look at that man right there. What's up, man? You gotta give me a hug like this. There you go. Yeah. What's up, man? You have leverage of your hips, your hamstrings, and your low back. So it's really an RDL as opposed to a squat up. And the other thing too is, if your legs are this wide, you're not going to be able to have a shelf to put the stone on. You want to come from here, sit it, boom, right on your shelf so you can come up and finish it. Raise the ass a little bit higher. Yeah, go from there. Yeah, ah, that's it, man. You got it. Yeah, do it again. You just got to shred it up those hands. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Hey! Oh, get close, get close, get close. Good, now look. Take your hands, put it over the top like this. Good, and when you come up, pull it up to your face. One. <laughs> hey, you know what, too? Uh, when you do it with no shirt on, it's 
slippery. It's a little slippery. We got the PRs over here. <laughs> yeah? No, no, no. Suck it on those Man, the brown rice? I've been sucking it down for about four or five You months. asked about nutrition before, right? Yeah. Okay, okay that, let's, that's let's it. Let's wrap. That's it with the brown rice. I need something more. Yeah, I mean, I've been li listening to what you said, the five by fives. Okay. Um, Is that what you're following right now and trying to gain mass? Yeah. Think about, think about if you're trying to gain mass, really, I, you got to pull out the mass gaining tool. And that's really, you should follow like a sort of bodybuilding parameter routine. 5x5 five five is good like to start a base. Yeah. And I always use 5x5 five five in, 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 in its variants as I move along at different intervals. But if I'm, stri if I'm straight up, like I want to gain muscle mass, it's going to be four sets of like 8, 10, 12, 15. You know what I'm saying? Pyramid up to like 15 reps and then down. It's going to be, a, uh, it's going to be like two or three exercises per body part as opposed to just squat, bench press, and deadlift. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gonna be like 30 to 60 second rest intervals. So you could do body, uh, powerlifting exercises. Just try with uh, bodybuilding parameters next. Yeah. Add the volume. Add the volume and shorten the rest intervals. Okay. Just keep down on the rice. I'm taking at yeah. least two cups a day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't mess around with too many more calories. Keep measuring your waist. Yeah. If you, that's the whole thing, right? Like if you're good the way you are right now, and you're eating the, the way you're eating right now keeps you that way, yeah. don't mess with it. But if you start eating a little bit more and then your waist is growing, yeah. I don't know, you might want to be a lineman or something, it's up yeah. to you. But if you want to have, if you're training for aesthetics, you want to look a certain way, then just don't let your waist get any bigger. If you add another cup of brown rice, and your waist stays the same and your shoulders get bigger, you're doing the right thing. But if you add another cup of brown rice and your waist starts getting big, now you're just getting fat. No, we don't fuck around 10s in here, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got 45s and 25s, and that's it. I'll put on oh. 25. You put on the 10s when you get the PRs. What do you, how much do you look? How much do you pull? What's up? What's the most you ever pull? Uh, most of our pull is like only 205. Come on, we're gonna put some weight on that bar. Pull this. You signed the waiver? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, good. I'm a strange balance of conservative and not giving a fuck. You gotta figure, you gotta figure that balance out. If you totally don't give a fuck, yeah, you're gonna kill yourself. And if you're too conservative, you're gonna be a pussy. So, see what you got, man. I think you can do this. I think you can do this. Oh. Same as before, nothing different. Drop it. Just put it down. When you pull, don't jerk it off the ground. You know good form. Keep your form tight. Just tighten your entire body. You should be like almost like you're pre-pulling. You're pulling it off the ground before you're actually pulling it. And then come up. Tighten everything up. Good, go, 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 go. Good. Nice job. I'm just watching from the side. Rest, and when you feel like you can do it again, do it again. So when I'm catching it, I should be sunk. Well, purpose is yes. That's fine right there. I don't know. Ah. That's a hundred times better though. Probably for like a little over a year. A almost. year! You show up here today, I say, put 20, 225 on that shit. And you're pulling it like, oh, no big deal. That means your threshold might be like, 315. Like you don't start breaking until 315, but you're still playing down by 205. So push yourself to where your form breaks. That way you know where your threshold is. So right now, this now you'll have two, uh, 275 on here. If you if you can pull this strict or as strict as you'd like to, that means you didn't reach your threshold yet. Now you might break, but then you just back up a little bit. I as long as you are structurally sound and have no energy, no injuries, I feel like. Push it to the max. Yeah. Go, go as hard as you can, and then back down instead of going, like, going up. Yeah, right. I say throw shit on the wall and see what sticks, as opposed to figuring out like what pieces of shit and where I want to throw it. Yeah. All right, let's get it.
Come on, you can do this. We are. Good. And even if your form breaks, go with it. You're a healthy guy. You can handle a little bit of round back lifting. Just do whatever you gotta do. Just lift the fucking thing. Come on. Right? That's why I'm not religious about any of this shit. I contradict myself. you against during the, the last lift. You're trying to jerk it off the ground. Does that make sense? Yeah. You try to jerk that off your ground, off the ground, your arms are gonna get pulled out the sockets and gonna be two arms on the bar and you're gonna be standing over here. <laughs> with no arms. <laughs> you you want to get to the point where you everything is tense. Look at this. There's no there's no movement in my body from here to here. My body is moving. And then you tighten it up before you pull, right? Here, even if you even if you do a leg drive like some guys do, yeah. here leg drive, bang. Do you see the difference? You want to be tight and then pull out. That way you you know your core is engaged the entire time. There's no letting loose and then tightening back up, which now you can fuck yourself up yeah. and you won't be as strong. I think you can pull that. I told you you could fucking do it. Yes, sir. Take that with you, brother. Yes, sir. Ah. Right on. <laughs> Good. Good. Hey, pretty nice. You got really long legs and a short torso. Yeah, it looks that way to me at least. Okay, you got long legs. Uh, with long legs and short torso might be better with a sumo stance. You know your hips might have been destroyed because they were really sore because you were actually using them. It seemed like you used a lot more hips and glutes that time than with your first one. Not to say that one's better than the other, I'm just looking at your leverage. I did feel it here though. Is it more inside here? Yeah. Do you, know, do you stretch your adductors? Do you get your butt all the way up against. Yeah. Slide to the right a little bit because we're going to spread your legs. Good. Yes. Spread them. Good. As wide as they'll go. Tight, huh? Work that one. Tighten up your quads. Flex your quads, can you? That's tough, man. <laughs> Work this one, then stay right there. Bend your knees and bring your feet. You know how to stretch your hip flexors? Nope. Can I do that? No. Work those two stretches. Just go back to the one, two, one, two, for about a minute each. And let's see what it would look like. I just have a feeling you'll be a better deadlift than what I understand. And then it even comes back. So it's like, what is the scar here? Right. You have a scar oh, there? That was a mole. A mole, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Surgery. Yeah, but man, you totally, you, you're totally. How do, how do I fix that? This way, this way, this yeah. way, this way. I, I get to 315 pound deadlift. Yeah, and I can't do it. I, I get pain. Right? Yeah, of course you have pain. Look, I mean, your your hip is all hiked up on that side. You're almost leaning there. Of course, this trap is much bigger. You're you're wasting a lot of energy. When I say that, I mean it must be tiring to have to hold yourself up all the time. 
yeah, yeah. Come on back, come on back. Let me see. Go to the, turn around and face me. You, I would totally get my Atlas checked if I were you. That was the first how thing. Do, how do I do that? You Where do you live? Uh, Canada, Ontario. How long are you here? Three more days. Where are you staying? Uh, hold the, I'll give you the phone number, but the, the, the clinic right around the block from me yeah, here. Yeah, they'll come. So they'll work. What, what does that mean? You tell them to go to the line. That means that there's a potential that your body's receive, and which it definitely is, receiving messages from your nervous system. Your brain talks to your body, and there's afferent and efferent messages. There's messages coming from your body to your brain, and from your brain to your body, and they communicate. But their communication can get fuzzy. And their communication can get fuzzy because the infrastructure by which they, their telecommunication lines can be interrupted with. The interruption oftentimes is, comes in the form of uh, subluxations. So meaning your, your vertebrae are out. They're, they're moved into position where they affect the smoothness of communication through your entire spinal cord up through the, 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 the fossa. The, the atlas, which is the, the very first vertebrae right here, think of it as your as the general commander. He's he's getting the messages right out of the skull, right out of the brain. There's one guy, and he's right there. And if he is getting bad messages, what do you think everything else is getting? And those bad messages can often, I mean, they show up in your in your viscera, in your organs. They show up everywhere. But most obvious is they sh it shows up in an imbalance of energy being distributed from left to right in your body. It, it being off will cause a cascading effect where everything below your neck will have to compensate because your head would be like this. Yeah, I, I get a lot of jaw. Oh, of course. My, yeah. A lot of tension to my face and jaw. Yeah. My posture is like... Your head, your, your head ain't on straight. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. If your head is not on straight, What's gonna happen is, well, if my head is this way, I'm gonna shift my hip that way a little bit. Because, look, for survival, the most important thing for, for survival, number one, is breathing, chewing, seeing, hearing. So everything needs to be in an equilibrium from here up. If there is something that causes an equilibrium from here up, meaning, well, now my eyes are crooked. And, my, and if your eyes are crooked, your head's crooked, your jaw's gonna be crooked too. So that's why you're cracking it in your jaw, right? Do you have e equal sight between both eyes? Can you, do you have equal hearing between both ears? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so this might be causing this. Now, if you're this, right, your body is going to do whatever it has to do to maintain the survival. Yeah, dropping your head. Right, reflex of keeping your head straight. Now, I can't keep my head straight because of the muscular imbalance is way up here, right? So, what my body's going to do is it's going to shift my hip that way a little bit, bring my shoulder this way a little bit, and turn this toe, foot out a little bit just so I can kind of maintain my balance. And I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna be like this. So I, so my head is on straight. Do you see? But if you get your head on straight, the rest of your body, like a transformer, gets lined up again. That's just one idea. I'm not saying that's what it is, but that's, one, that's, that's the very first one that I would say to check. What well, can you tell me about uh, stretching exercise that I can do? The reason why prescribing stretches and exercises is like, well, it can sort of support you in a corrective fashion in an, in an acute way. Meaning, if you want to do lateral raises and this side keeps hiking up, I'll just say, well, you need to stretch your trap there. Obviously, it's tighter. So now you can do lateral raises. But when you're done with one set, it's just going to go right back because the communication is off. You know, I notice when I'm doing overhead press, one shoulder. I kind of tilt that way. Well, your whole body tilted that way, yeah. so yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah you're gonna you're gonna just do this. Now I could say, stretch stretch your hip flexor on this side, your QLO on that side, and then go and do it. And you might be like, whoa, this is awesome. I'm not bending anymore. And then you put down the bar, you go sit, you stand up, and you're here again. So the stretches are helpful in, in an acute fashion, but ultimately it's like, well, you're still kind of. Um, your nervous system is still on autopilot taking you somewhere else. You know, it's like the navigation is set to go that way, and you go and you, you turn the steering wheel, all right? 
and now I'm going this way, right? And you go back, it's like, okay, now we're set to go this way. Navigation says go that way. And then you go and you, you cook some hamburgers and get some beer with your buddies below deck. And then you come back and the, it's like, whoa, what the, what the fuck? We're going this way again. So you gotta reset the navigation. The navigation point is in your neck. Yeah, man. I wish, I, I wish I could give you like, like something beautiful and nice and say, yeah, here, my friend, do this. But uh, I'd be lying to you. Yeah. Uh, but hey man, that's what you're doing. That is the work of becoming the strongest version of yourself. And it's a neurotic desire to be better than who we are. And everything that you do, every resource that you spend, every moment that you waste on becoming a stronger version of yourself in any particular way is the best investment that you could make. So make it your, make it your mission. Here's what happens when you make it your mission also and, and, you, and you correct it. You now have met Jesus. You know what I mean? Oh my God! I've been saved! And you know what people who get saved do? They go and tell everybody. And they try to save everybody else. So do that. Go save yourself. Because then you're going to have no choice but to go and save everybody else. And that's how the world becomes a stronger version of itself. You get stronger through your struggles. And then you can't help it. Tell everybody else. But earlier, Gus was trying to deadlift. I told him he might look better if he did a sumo stance. I sent him to go inside and stretch his adductors. He stretched your glutes. He stretched his entire hips, came out and said, oh my God, I feel like a rush of new blood in this particular area that he's never had it before. Came back out, redid the sumo deadlift, no pain. Let me see, before he was having a lot of pain in the groin. This is why correcting stretching makes sense. Now, it doesn't mean it's gonna correct you for life, but it means if you want to deadlift, Go stretch before you pull. Good. I think you, I don't mean I'm right. This is just my assessment. I think you'd be a better deadlifter with that stance and keep practicing those two stretches. I think you're just gonna keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger in your deadlift. Cool, man. Yeah, you got it. Get this yet? Set. If I were to start all over again, and I was a lot younger, I'd probably start with CrossFit or boot camp. I started with strength camp because there was no such thing as either of those when I started. I made up my own. 